Hi there, it's Aoife here from Eurogamer. As a massive fan of the original Final Fantasy VII, I am very excited to finally be able to play and show off gameplay from the upcoming Final Fantasy VII Remake. And so here it is as I'm about to play through the entire demo in all its Mako infused glory. So this demo takes place near the start of the game in Midgar as Avalanche prepared to destroy Shinra's Sector 1 Mako reactor. I've actually watched a hands-off demo before, conducted by producer Yoshinori Kitase at Gamescom this year, that does start players off at the very beginning of the game, with the classic opening shots of our favourite flower girl and the city of Midgar, closing in on the train arriving at the Sector 1 station and Cloud dramatically disembarking after Biggs, Wedge, Jesse and Bart recreated perfectly. But aside from that, I don't think there's too much preceding this gameplay that you're seeing right now. It's just a couple of fights at the station, a couple of door hacks, and you're right in there. That's our target, the reactor core. Gotta set the bomb at the bottom. Heads up, boys. The end's in sight. I leave the rest in your capable hands. Good luck. So as you can hear, Jesse and the other slightly more minor non-playable characters have been fleshed out quite a bit, with Jesse in particular standing out as an early favourite who definitely won't be breaking our hearts a few hours in. Aww, you're choosing me over the reactor? That's sweet, but I'll wait my turn. Go blow her mind. Go on, shoo! Aw, you're choosing me over the reactor? I really do love her confident and flirty persona, but in this house we only have eyes for Tifa Lockhart, so let's just keep going. God damn, I can practically taste Tamako in here. Hurry it up! <laughs> In addition to the usual items like potions and ethers that you keep in case of emergencies, it looks like the remake also has new items like Mako Crystals, which immediately grant you a small amount of MP on being picked up. 5 MP may not seem like much, but think about it being an entire extra cure or thunder spell and then you'll gladly take it. And then, of course, aside from instant items, it's good to see the trusty old chests containing classic favourites like Tufts of Phoenix Down are still very much present and correct. So as you can see here, it looks like there are no more random battles that can take you by surprise at any moment as you explore the world, like in the original, but instead now you'll usually see your enemies before you engage them in combat, on patrol or just simply wandering around. And although the combat itself looks very different to the original active time battle system, in practice and in your hand, the difference is mostly that the remake gives you things to do while you wait for the ATB gauge to fill up, instead of just having you sit there all and wait. Huh. Cocky little bastard, ain't you? So instead of just standing around taking hits to the face and waiting for your turn to act, you can run around, take cover or take action and perform basic attacks to speed up the ATB gauge filling up. And it really only feels like actual meaningful damage when you're using a spell or a skill from tactical mode. So it is still in the spirit of the original ATB system of the original Final Fantasy VII, while feeling like a more engaging battle system than ignore magic and spam the attack button to win in more recent Final Fantasy entries like XV. Speaking of magic, it's not entirely clear yet how the Materia system works and how it'll be equipped to each individual character, like if it'll be via weapon and armor slots or if it'll be revamped somehow. But this demo did seem to emphasize the fact that characters can work differently to one another. So obviously Bart's gun arm has always meant he specialized in ranged combat while Cloud deals damage up close. But this demo's boss fight, where the scorpion jumps in and out of reach as it clings to the walls of the reactor, hammers the importance of long range versus close range combat home. And the fact that you actually control the character's positioning means that you can further take advantage of their specific spells and skills when, for instance, dealing out a cure spell or a potion and making sure Barret is well out of the reach of standard attacks first. Right down to the bottom. To the planet's core. No, the pump would suck us back up. Hmm. How comforting. 
Cloud's focus on being right in the midst of battle, taking damage and performing melee attacks means his ATB gauge fills up faster and yet he's often not the best choice for a quick heal. There's a time and a place for everything and spamming attack really won't get you anywhere fast. I think it's really cool that even the slightly surreal enemy design of the mono drives and the sentry ray seem to fit the environment and yet remain true to their original appearances. And I like the little death animation of the mono drives when their weird little headpiece falls off. It's also worth noting how standard battles are further streamlined as you return to exploring immediately and battle summaries on items and gill won and EXP received are just simply shown on the side rather than getting an end card and victory music on their own every time. Chatter between characters as you explore the world can often get tedious, especially when it's two characters that aren't that fond of each other. Yeah, let's do this! Let's do this! But the lines of dialogue spouted by Bart and Cloud here are just quite funny and serve to remind you of how terse their relationship is in this very early stage. I really can't wait to see how things change as more members get added to the party and relationships develop. All right, let's see if Little Stamp really can bite the hand that feeds. Go on, do the honors. Prove to me you're the man Tifa says you are. That you're one of us. Never said I was. I'm just here for the paycheck. Then do the damn job! Scorpion, or Scorpion Sentinel as it's been renamed here. This is the very first boss fight in the game, as with the original, so it's here mostly to serve as a tutorial, and yet, it's not exactly a pushover. So staggering wasn't a factor in the original Final Fantasy VII, but it has played an important part in Final Fantasy games since then, and it does add an interesting extra layer of strategy to this first boss fight. Staggering the Scorpion temporarily halts its onslaught of attacks and increases your attack damage against it for a short amount of time. And really, the only way to stagger it is to use tactical mode. Anyone who's played the original knows, Thunder is a very good spell to have on heavy rotation at this early stage of the game as it works wonders on mechanical enemies, despite being slightly misleadingly named, but we won't hold that against them. Obviously though, I'm not going to just spam Thunder because we want to try out some of the other spells and abilities as well now that we have the chance. Most of these attacks are pretty well telegraphed, with maybe the only exception being when it goes into this barrier mode. The trick here, just so you know, is apparently to attack this very, um, specific weak spot. Now he remembers. Don't keep me waiting in suspense next time. Go for the guard scorpion's butthole is a sentence I never thought I'd say. Or go down in flames. It's also worth pointing out that you not only need the ATB gauge to perform spells and attacks, you also need it to use items, like potions and ether. So it could be easy to get stuck in a tricky situation if you're using ATB slots for attacks every chance you get. Make sure that you're thinking long term and strategically. Uh, uh, on this. Now's our chance. 
Give it everything you've got. The fact that some enemies can bind a character, forcing you to use other party members in order to free them, is a less than subtle hint from the game that it wants you to swap characters often or at least issue commands as all of the characters rather than just sticking to one and letting AI take care of the other. It's really easy to swap between characters during combat by pressing up or down on the D-pad. But if you'd rather stick with just one perspective, you can assign commands to the other characters by selecting them with L2 or R2 and navigating their tactical menus that way. Personally, I preferred swapping between characters and giving them commands that way, but it's good that the game gives you the choice. Once combat ends, in this demo at least, the perspective immediately and automatically switches back to Cloud. Maybe it's just me, but it is really nice to see Limit Breaks still getting the rather extra looking rainbow highlight when they become available. You might have noticed that former Limit Breaks like Braver have become more regular skills, which makes me wonder how Limit Breaks will evolve over time in this game, or whether there'll be opportunities for Limit Breaks to link up with those of other characters when timed correctly. That would be really cool to see. The Scorpion has a couple of different phases, and it's fun to watch it pull out every trick in the book as it gets progressively more beaten up and the cutscenes blend pretty seamlessly in with the gameplay. This is a subtle reshaping of a line in the original game that I think confused a lot of people. In the original, Bard tells Cloud to attack while its tail is up, but if you did, it would counter-attack with a super powerful move every single time. I think it was dialogue that got a little bit lost in translation. So here, the game encourages you to take cover by providing debris to hide behind whenever the tail is up. A much better plan that also showcases how you can use the environment to your advantage in the remake. Uh, not good enough! see from this gameplay, but it really feels like the Final Fantasy VII Remake has struck the right balance between the classic ATB system and a more modern, action-oriented approach. I've been waiting for this. this one right here is for the flesh. It doesn't feel like you're simply mashing buttons to win, nor does it feel overly fiddly or complex once you get the hang of how things work which doesn't really take long at all. I can imagine it'll get even more interesting with the introduction of more party members and more diverse spells and skills. But as a first taste, this boss fight is pretty great. It's a very short demo, all things considered, but it does the job and leaves us hungry for more. Let us know what you think and what you're excited about seeing in the Final Fantasy VII Remake in the comments below. Ain't gotta tell me twice. Yeah. 
for the game recently went live from TGS, featuring a first glimpse of the Turks, summons, frog status, and Don Corneo. It's all extremely exciting, so look forward to a video on that from us very soon. Until then, check out one of these other Final Fantasy videos, and thanks for watching this one. We will see you in Midgar. Bye!